So hello dear viewers and welcome back. As you can see I have gotten off my high horse for the past few episodes and have stopped presentive, presenting irrelevant quirky and forgotten devices in order to show you my filming gear. Next on the old chopping block is the GoPro 10. I got this thing about two months ago. I had been an enthusiastic but an unexperienced Lumix GH4 user for more than one year, I managed to get some decent video footage in that time, but really moving clips with the old uh, Micro Four Thirds camera that lacked IBIS and uh, that's internal body stabilization were absolutely dreadful. Enter the action cam genre, more specifically the GoPro. And before we delve into the review any further, let me show you what a GoPro Hero 10 should look like, what its packaging offers. Just so many of you out there that are looking into buying this one secondhand, don't get scared off by any knockoff scams or what have you. So here is the GoPro packaging. It's... Um, well, it's a rather interesting concept because they didn't spend too much uh, time, effort or energy or resources into designing a, spe a special box which has no use and gets thrown away. Uh, rather interesting um, though, they did this cardboard thing which just um, gets uh, unsealed. There's a carton seal here, you open it up, you extract the packaging itself so this one is just a cardboard the mention of what the GoPro offers and you get uh, well the the box itself is actually a case a carrying case so it's really nice it's made out of a textile resistant material it sort of mimics Gore-Tex because it's um, it's textured like this it also has a cardboard back so it's pretty resistant. It's molded into the textile, so there's no issue with breaking it, uh, only if you use it extensively. It's got a nice GoPro um, writing here, a logo, and inside you don't get really much. Uh, you get some sort of booklet, some product questions, you get some stickers. I don't know what you would use these for, but anyway, you get to use them. There's all sorts of information and this is, well, it's a QR code for the app. Uh, inside, except for this one, this is a, uh, this is a filled uh, a screw compatible holder. It's metal uh, machined. I got this off, uh, um, um, off a website. It's not an original product, but these, this is only uh, the only accessories that came into the box were these. This is um, some sort of uh, mounting point, something or other. I don't really care for it because I don't do a lot of mountain biking, bicycling and stuff like that. I would like to, but I don't have a, I don't own a bike and I don't really have time for another hobby. So yeah, there's this uh, styrofoam or rather cardboard um, sort of like an egg carton which held the camera like so and that's well that's the only thing that gets into the box basically so onwards with the review I shall be putting this stuff away as it's not really important there's a nice pocket here which holds all your booklets but I just put them away w along with the cardboard. But let's move on to the GoPro. Now there are a few caveats here. I knew I wanted an action cam because I could not afford a decent mirrorless camera with IBIS and because I intended to use the action cam not only for my YouTube endeavors but also for the occasional exploring and holiday filming. As for the brand, cheap models and Chinese offerings were simply dreadful in terms of image quality, albeit very cheap. Yeah, you can get one for about 50 to 100 euros, but really I would not recommend it. Um, 
the only instance I would see that camera useful if if you have children and you want to introduce them to well to gadgets yeah you could buy something on the cheap other than that no um, at the other end of the spectrum however some DJI and Sony offerings might have been better more a more mature calculated option given that I was going to use it as a YouTube camera also but to my dismay those cost quite a lot more than the GoPro so the next came the big one which model to buy on the one hand, the Hero 8 was way cheaper than the Hero 10. It offered 4K resolution, which is what you really want, and 80 to 90% of the features from the GoPro 10 with actual excellent end results, and not really worth the upgrade to 10. It's like the 8 is almost, uh, it's like the Hero 8 is almost uh, 350 euros, maybe a bit less, and the new Hero 10 is 550 euros, at least in my country. Next in the lineup was the Hero 9, but that was an in-between step, muddying up the waters even further when it came to features and better resolution than Hero 8 additional front colored LCD screen like in the Hero 10, more modern battery, the same as in the Hero 10 actually. So this Hero 9 cost about 450 euros new. So finally in the lineup came the Hero 10. And here are some of its most heavily publicized features. New GP2 processor, 5.3K resolution at 60 frames per second, HyperSmooth 4.0, better low light cap capabilities. As for, the la as for the last one, I don't really see it, or at least I don't know how bad the Hero 8 is, and therefore I'm glad I went with the Hero 10, as I consider this one to be fairly bad in low light filming as well. But two things made me go for the Hero 10, and I don't regret splurging on the higher price excellent front screen which shows you live recording not only technical data like in the Hero 8 and top of the range hardware for 2021 when I got it important if you are to keep the device for a long time have a look at my GH4 review and you will learn that I don't always get to buy the latest in a lineup of devices so the price difference to me was worth it now, the actual real-world performance. I find that this shoots excellent moving footage as long as you don't get too close to your objects. So no, no macro or close-ups with this one. But that's to be expected from an action cam. Stabilization is exquisite and geometric aberrations in the corners are simply not there. So big winning points to the GoPro for this one. It also offers 24 frames per second mode which can somewhat sync with the GH4 footage to give the same flow feel to the video. Colors are vibrant and convincing so they're not overdone. Another benefit is the huge array of shooting modes and capabilities though I will say that navigating through the menu is not quite easy. So let's just start it up. By the way, you powered up here, not here when, where there's a red circle. This one actually starts the filming right off the bat, so you want to start it here. And as I've said, yeah, you can move around in the menu, but uh, really uh, it's intuitive, but hard to hard to uh, operate really so it's frustrating at times but you do understand this is an action cam after all uh, real estate um, screen real estate is limited uh, limited and precious resources so you get you get why they did this but still I don't really find my look I'm trying to operate this section here cuz I want to switch from picture to below but I'm not not really able to so you can see why I think this is quite frustrating 
Another benefit is the huge array of shooting modes and capabilities, though I will say that navigating through the menu is not quite as easy, so let me just show you. By the way, you turn it on by pressing a long, doing a long press on this button, not this one. This one simply starts off a record, so you want, you would want to use this one. So yeah, I like that you can, you are able to um, select your resolution and um, you get a cinematic look and what have you. And also you can select the wide and ultra wide modes if I were just able to uh, push this. So the screen is difficult to operate. Look, I get that uh, real estate, screen real estate is a limited resource in, the, in an action cam, but still I find it quite frustrated. frustrating. So you get the super view, an ultra wide view, a wide view, a linear view, and a narrow view. So usually I, I'm inclined to uh, filming in a wide in a super view or what, not wide but linear this one is about an equivalent for i don't know a 12 to 14 millimeter but only in micro four thirds speak because i don't know what that full frame equivalent would be but i like this one the best so this linear shooting mode in 4k's 4k resolution at 24 frames per second is as close to my GH4 setup as I would prefer. Now narrow is when you try to film some sort of portrait effect but not really a go in an action cam. Colors are also vibrant and convincing but they're not overdone so huge points there as well. Sound recording is simply awesome if you don't plan to do studio work. Sometimes it's better than my Saramonic lapel microphone which I attached to the GH4 and which cost me a whole bunch of money. Yeah, I know I can add some filtration to that one but I just haven't gotten to that level as I use it out of the box and the, Co and the GoPro is simply better at that. Now for the less than impressive parts. I actually will call them downsides. No blurred background or bokeh effect with this one. So video footage will not be vibrant, will not jump out at you and entice you at first. Well, the footage will be a bit more flat compared to even bottom basement mirrorless camera offerings. 4K resolution is actually Ultra HD at 3840 by 2160 pixels and not tr the true cinematic 4K as in my GH4 at 4096 by 2160 uh, pixels. So I'm having a bit of a trouble syncing those two formats together but I will get around it. 5.3K, which is also available, is also an incompatible ratio to what I'm looking for and it offers less flexibility compared to 4K, so uh, frame rate is a bit lower and stuff like that. Hardware-wise, it's a bit odd as it doesn't want to charge when connecting to the USB Type-C slot. So this is how you open up the battery slot. I'll just turn on the device for safety's sake. I don't want to um, make it reset when the battery is disconnected. So that's how you power it off. Uh, by the way, in the packaging there were, was also a USB Type-C cable, a small one like this. I believe this is the actual one, yes, because this is the GoPro Type-C cable but uh, not much else. So, when you try to uh, charge it, you need to open up this slot, this door. The battery is removable, of course. I will show you the battery as well. Mm. 
battery works just fine otherwise but the way the charger works with the battery door opened which is this one uh, simply does not lend itself to easy operation so here is the cable connection here is the battery I will show you this in detail right now hopefully I get a focus yeah so this is the battery these are the connectors up top this is how the GoPro looks inside have a look so you can see the connectors it's a really small little thing but when you connect the camera like so you put the battery in make sure it's well placed but when you connect the cable and set it on the table it tends to move and well one unintentional movement and the battery moves in its socket disconnecting the pins and rendering the whole process invalid i know there's a way around this issue as i can get an external charger but it's not that cheap and then i would think about getting a second bigger battery or the high performance orange variant and at this point when youtube is just a passion and doesn't get me any money i have decided to put a rest to hardware investment I know it doesn't show and I will do a video once I finished reviewing all my stuff but I am well north of 2000 euros in video equipment at the moment and most of it is obsolete or knockoff I mean um, tripods and stuff like that uh, I have a stable <laughs> a Chinese carbon fiber stabilizer but that's a story for another time so as you can see uh, creating video is not a cheap hobby then again which hobby is so let me just show you quickly how I have filmed with my GoPro let me put the packaging back so there's not too much clutter on the on this desk so this is actually what I use when holding the GoPro it was the cheapest uh, it was the cheapest um, um, selfie stick that I could find. It had a phone support here, but I didn't use that one. What I find, found very interesting is that this, this cheap, it was a five euro selfie stick. So this selfie stick is actually compatible with the GoPro. Uh, extending uh, stands or what these pieces are I know they don't really seem to fit quite well but and also this plastic is way cheaper than the GoPro uh, plastic and it's quite difficult to screw into place but important the important thing that is that once I get it in the GoPro itself is not actually affected by the way this thing is held into place and I can really while well, use it at will I can adjust the the height obviously I can use it as a stand as well as a tripod and basically it's a great nifty way to use this thing around to film with it because I don't really need uh, extra uh, stabilization like with a with a gimbal so yeah I'm pretty pleased with this uh, tiny accessory it even comes with its own tiny screw so yeah that's a neat little trick there so with that in mind I promise to show you some more of my filming toys and when I will have finished, I will do a short clip with my thoughts and conclusions. Until the next one, I thank you for watching.